back with who will be the knife of the week. And uh, today we've got three contenders for knife of the week. Uh, I got one relatively new one and a couple of older ones here. So first up, we've got this guy right here. This is one of my old time favorites. This is my Carl Schmidt zone. Uh, some people call it a clone, but I just call it a sweet knife. It's got the buffalo horn with the uh, dual colors going on. We've got the five turn fluted corkscrew, brass liners, beauty. Check out that all. Bam. Look at that triangle all. Three sided Jones. Good job. We've got. The old school Warner style can opener. The, whoops, the knock over my phone. It's so good. Uh, flathead screwdriver cap lifter. Z. Very. This is a razor fine clip blade. I kind of like that. I don't use my small blade for much, like for like little delicate stuff. This is great. Very thin. A razor sharp little blade right there and then finally we've got the heavily worn but still plenty of life left to go main blade with the uh carl schmidt zone Soligen stamp with their little uh house with the crosses on the end adorable nothing on the back but yeah this is a classic stamp i love this stamp um next up We've got an oldie but a goodie. This is always a contender in my eyes. This is a little early 60s uh, climber small. Uh, it's more like the Traveler, but they didn't have that back then. So this was just another climber. No keychain, no bail, no scale tools. I love this knife. We've got the five turn fluted corkscrew. We've got that. Uh oh, I got a short thumbnail apparently. Rimmer, bam! Look at that guy. How about that? We've got the lovely cap lifter screwdriver with the sharpened edge for cable stripping, of course. The plus pat can opener with the 2D Phillips. There, goody bow. How you like me now? We've got the highly regarded 84 millimeter scissors. Bam. A lovely little clip blade with the factory edge. A uh, little, I've used it a little bit. Cut some packing tape with it, clearly. I, that's the one thing about opening uh, that clear tape all the time. Everything I get comes in the clear tape, and the clear tape is a pain in the ass to get off every blade I use. And last but not least, we've got the main blade. It's got a very subtle Ottenberg basil. I might have showed this last week again. Got the Victoria Officer Swiss stamp. And then finally, we've got a runner-up from the last two weeks. My old, beat-up, modified, heavily used uh, Remington Scout Knife. I believe this Scout Knife dates to uh, the like uh, 1921 to 1944 era, the first part of Remington. Uh, it doesn't look like it says made in USA around the side. It's hard to tell because this is so rotten over here, but... Uh, Looking at it really close, it looks like it never had the uh, Made in USA around the side. It did say Remington UMC in the middle, and you'll see in a minute. We've got the Reamer has, this is what that tank stamp would have looked like. And on that blade, it would have said Made in USA around the outside of it if it was post, uh, I believe, 1924. So something like that. We've got the... One of my late late favorites of late. I just love the the workmanship on this, even though it's a two piece can opener. Uh, they this was supposedly stronger than the one piece can opener. I I don't see how, but you know I'm not an engineer either, so give me a break. Get off my back, please. We've got the Remington with the pat number, beautiful. We've got the uh, what used to be a long screwdriver that's now a stubby screwdriver with a cap lifter still works good still love it this is a uh, one of my favorites and finally last but not least we've got the main blade that somebody has modified to a clip either the tip broke or it just who knows but 
I, I, I'm all about it. The pitting on this, it's just got, this has that old vibe that I just love in a knife. And let's see, we've got the climber, we've got the Carl Smith zone, we've got the Remington. And this week, I am going with the Carl Schmidt Zone for the knife of the week. Yeah, check her out, man. The horn work. This is one of the finest crafted knives. I would say these two, uh, uh, in all seriousness, these two are two of the finest uh, examples of manufacturing that I've ever seen. Um, aside, I have a Boker knife that's not here right now. It's in the other room. But, uh, this thing, this, the way they made these springs, it's nice and flush across here. Everything feels nice and smooth. Everything is rock solid and tight. Uh, everything is even, square, straight, level. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's a damn near flawless build. And same thing with this, uh, even Victorinox, their level of quality is exceptional. But uh, I can see a common thing I see in these. If you want to get nitpicky, this is talking extremely nitpicky. Let's look. We might have one here behind it. I don't have any scissors here. Normally, the scissors, see these scissors are perfectly centered. Normally, they lean to one side or the other. Same thing with these uh, and the blades here. The blades don't even touch each other. Uh, they really did a good job. Somebody used the hell out of this. They bent it. I'm not talking about the damage that was done by people. I'm just talking purely about how this would have rolled off the factory floor. This is a perfect example. Uh, none of the blades rub on the sides. There's no rub marks on the main blade or the clip blade from hitting the scales. They don't touch each other. There's no rub marks on the blades from touching each other. It's, it's really, uh, 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 there's no gaps, no spaces, no proud springs. It's as good as it gets. But this week, I'm going with my trusty old Carl Schmidt Zone for the knife of the week. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peter Greer is out.